Hey guys, this is Abhishek and in this video I will continue the conversation of Arima time series forecasting and in the last video I talked about the theory and uh, talked about the Arima model, the basics of Arima and uh, its component PDQ and then talked about what PDQ really means so that means the PACF uh, function Differencing, what differencing is, and then uh, you know uh, the ACF function for Q parameter. Then finally, I discussed about the auto dot arima, so that uh, you don't really have to figure out PDQ values of arima function by doing the experimenting or something. And uh, auto dot arima really helps us, you know, automating this entire piece. So we will see both of these things action in this video with the help of an example of. Uh, rains in india so let me go to the r studio and uh, here the data set we are we are using is a previously created rain underscore india underscore ts that means uh, in mm you know uh, mm para as a you know uh, value or i would say a rating grade or estimation parameter how how much was the rain in india uh, in different years so first of all what we need is importing the library which is forecast then plotting the value so here we can see that uh, these are the rains in mm and these are the different years in which the rain has happened so we can see that uh, there is a kind of constant variance and the values are pretty much uh, normally distributed with a little bit of skewed here and there so we will see how we can reduce the uh, variance or uh, these peaks and uh, make it much more uh, stationary series for our arima forecasting so uh, first of all uh, in the previous video i talked about uh, differencing or the lags how to create lag variables so that's basically your diff 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 function is what we need to do is provide the time series that we have created earlier and then with the differences of one so if you're not sure what one is i would really recommend that you go back and see my previous video in the theory where i covered it so if i press ctrl enter now uh, it has created me a new time series with a difference of one and then let me plot the time series so here uh, we see that most of the peaks have been covered only with this one little bit of peak and then uh, try to see the difference too. So control enter, experimenting it with the two differences, control enter. And now also, you know, we can see that comparatively uh, the variance have been reduced with little bit of peaks again. So it looks like uh, these, these peaks are uh, part of this variance or, or this data set. So let's go ahead and try to see the ACF and PACF function and then we will see whether these differencing is really required or not with the help of the ARIMA function. So, but you always have the option that you continue go up to three, four, five level and uh, try identifying where it is normalizing for you. So if you are an expert, you will clearly identify that uh, whether you need these peaks or don't need these peaks or whether this is a variance constant variance so acf function again helps us providing the q parameter so if i press ctrl enter so what we are doing is we are plotting the acf on diff one and it, that means uh, when the difference was one so it can we can see that uh, the q value is coming one because here uh, the the value for one uh, first leg is going out of the bound so with this we can identify that q is equals to one so we have identified that difference is one say for example uh, that we want to use the first difference time series then d is equals to one when pcf uh, we have plotted the acf function the first value is going out of the bounds that means q is equals to one and then with the help of pcf function we will identify the value of p so let's press control enter and here we can see the first value and second value is going out of the bound and then value is reducing 
and probably it's just a matter of chance that these values are also going out of the bounds along with this value so let's go ahead with the first two values and try to experiment with the model so one thing is that you may not be sure whether this is zero or one so what you can do is in such cases you can make plot is equals to false press control enter and you will find the values over here so first value is 0.610 so definitely this is the value the second value is 0.327 so it is going out of the bounds third is uh, 0.47 so here and then 0 0.205 so on and so forth so if you are not sure uh, about these values which is getting plotted because of the number is not getting displayed you can make the plot is equals to false but there are other parameters also which i would really recommend but this is just to start with uh, these are the basic three parameters at the max you can give and try to experiment with your time series all right after this what we can do is we can fit a model uh, so what we need to do is use the function arima that is auto regressive integrated moving average and then provide the time series as the first parameter and then the order so order is basically two because two is what we have identified over here the two values are going out of the bound in pacf function so that's the value of p then p d t is differencing so we are using first order differencing that's why we have provided one and then q the last value is q is one because the first value is going out of the bounds so with that you can identify your order and then press control enter this will produce the rain model for you and then we can see the internal real model so it's coefficient auto regressive one two ma1 so it's basically the uh, you can clearly see that p is basically the auto regressive term ar1 that means the pacf function is basically the auto regressive function ma is a moving average function that means the acf function uh, with the value of one so that's why for p you are getting two terms two auto regressive and for one differencing term sorry uh, acf or moving average term so that's the values that you have got with the aic and other values after this what you can do you can use the auto dot arima function so auto dot arima is again as i mentioned earlier it helps you automating this entire process and uh, you don't really have to plot acf or pacf so let's see what result it is giving so the function name is auto.arima and it is present in the library for cast. So let's press press control enter. So here we have the rain arima model and now let's see it's working. So here it is giving us the AR1 and AR2 two terms but with the MA earlier we have just got the one if you see MA is one and two. So that's the model that with zero differencing it has produced with the two pacf and two acf terms the function for us or the model for us so what arima is saying that this is the best function uh, with the non zero mean so these are the values that we have got again the aic and bic so it's a kai information criteria it's one of the important parameter uh, that's the one, high information criteria that's basically one of the important parameter uh, to identify it and I'll talk more uh, about uh, these parameters along with the error values uh, in the next video so that you can get a better idea so in this video we'll just focus on producing the model and seeing the how we can get these things in action so after you have produced the model you may want to test it so with the help of lung box test we can plot the residuals to see whether there is any correlation between the uh, residuals so if there is correlation that means uh, it is uh, not a good model if there is no correlation then then you know uh, the model is good so that means the null hypothesis becomes and uh, uh, it is saying that uh, there is a correlation mm -hmm. and alternative hypothesis is that there is no correlation so if the p value comes greater than uh, 0 0.05 then we can safely say 
that no correlation is present. All right. So let's go ahead and press Control Enter. And here the output, so x square degree of freedom and p value is 0 0.89. So p value 0 0.89 is clearly indicating that uh, the autocorrelation or the correlation is not present. And uh, we can uh, safely use this model for the purpose of forecasting. And after we have done that, what we can do is we can take the RAIN model forecast to forecast the next three periods. So let's press Control Enter. So forecast is a function that we have used and then let's plot the values so here we have the point forecast for 2013 14 and 15 uh, rain forecast in india and uh, uh, let's so here is the plot uh, rain underscore model underscore forecast let's try to plot this and here we have got the plot for rain model forecast so this is 2013 that means there will be high rain in 2014 low and then in 2015 along with their uh, 85 80 degree and 95 degree freedoms i think that's what it is yeah 80 degree and 95 degrees of freedom what the range may be so that's what we have got and after that um finally what we have is the accuracy in rain underscore arima so what it does is it produces a lot of parameters uh, related to uh, related to the uh, arima modeling which can tell us uh, how much there is variance like mean absolute deviation mape and so on and so forth so let's see this so m e r m s c m a e mean absolute error if i'm not wrong m p e m a p e i think m a p e is one of the uh, mostly used so what i will do along with the acf1 as i mentioned earlier so what i will do is um, since it is a big topic uh, and require a separate discussion altogether uh, i'll prepare a next video on the errors and as well as aka information criteria the aic and uh, try to see all of these values along with their evaluation that what what they really mean when uh, the value is this and how it impacts the model or how it basically guide us in the direction that we have to take a different approach if not this one or we are confident enough with these uh, errors that you know uh, we can continue using it so with that uh, we can conclude the video but uh, it will be really interesting right now what we have done is we have produced the forecast so let's go and try to see whether our model has really provided a good forecast or not so this is just a very quick example i think when i produced the code it took me no more than i think five minutes uh, to produce the code and put it in a structure so let's see how our five minute work is really worth off when we really see the forecast uh, of rain in india so for that let me go here and see this in action so what we can do is uh rain in mm rain in 2003 india so uh here the rainfall statistics so that's where i have uh, taken the data set and i'll you know open this one also and probably it should show us what is the 2013 forecast so if i'm going down down so i just took a pause to really find the value so that i'm not uh, wasting your time and here on the second page which i passed on and i just came back and see that country as a whole we have the forecast uh, i'm sorry we have the actual value and again it's in mm for year 2013 so the value is 1242 and that's what uh, we are uh, that's what we need to see whether it is in our 80 degree or whether it matches to our point forecast or how much variance between the actual and the predicted value so let's go back to our r and what we predicted that uh, 1181 is a point forecast so generally it is uh, that's not what we take what we usually take is the uh, at 80 degree confidence and 95 degree confidence level 
where the value will land. So if we look at the 1242 country as a whole for 2013, then our values or our model is giving us accurate value. So at 80%, again, it is falling under this criteria and even 95% for sure, if it is falling under 80, it will definitely fall under the 95 because it will going to increase the upper and lower bound anyway. So, so what we can confidently say that what we have predicted is we can say at a 95 degree confidence that yes, that's where the value or the uh, rain will fall. So 1118 is very near to 1242. But in 2014, you can see that uh, we have predicted 1132 and that's here is the lower bound and upper bound. So very quickly, I want to just check the 2014 and uh, let's see this. Try to see what it is coming. Rain monsoon report card 2014. And let me pause it and figure out where the value is. All right, so this is the second link which I opened and 1044 that means in as you can see that in 2013 so for 2013 it was 1242 and we predicted a higher forecast that 1181 and in 2014 we predicted a lower forecast 1132 so uh, this can be validated that in 2013 there is a higher rainfall and in 2014 when we predicted a lower forecast there is a lower uh, rainfall in mm in the year 2014 so this gives us a uh, good confidence that if our five minutes work have really paid off in identifying the uh, at a high level where the rain may fall uh, next year in the next years in the india and uh, basically helps us uh, doing the planning or you know activities but this is very very high level we have just taken one single parameter of rainfall in india but not the other parameters which generally expert statistician will take but our five minute work is really worth off but at least to give an indication uh, within the range where it may fall the rain may fall so that's that's pretty much all i have for you in this video and i'll meet you in the new video the new topic